always treat a new connection as someone who is really, really important. So whenever you meet someone, whether they're younger than you or older than you or the same age as you, it doesn't matter. Treat that person as they are worth your time and energy and that you would help them out no matter what. Because I feel like business is all about connecting people, uh, growing personally, like uh, without even professional, just growing as a person. I think that you need that um, servant leadership mentality and that will take you further than you could ever dream or think of truly um hi everyone thanks for listening to another episode of the creative truth today i'm talking with my good friend cynthia craddock she's a a a Mm co-jc a client a friend a marketing pro uh cynthia please tell us uh oh first question okay how has where you're from shaped the professional you are today oh that's a good question it gets easier from there okay I'm born and raised in Savannah, Georgia, Mm -hmm. Um, but my mom is in, she lives in Virginia, so I went back and forth a little bit. Um, I would say where I'm from shaped my professional career because um, I'm still here in the best way. So when you grow up in Savannah, you don't see um, a ton of people from Savannah stay in Savannah until it's a little bit later. And they're like, I just had to come home. Uh, when you grow up here, it's like, oh, no, I've got to get out. I've got to go do things and see things because Savannah has somewhat of a slow pace sometimes. A little bit. Used to, at least. Now, not so much. But um, growing up, you felt like you just wanted to go, go, go. And then when I got out of college, I came back and saw a whole new side of Savannah that was really just lovely. Um, and the people are, are wonderful and welcoming and everyone has that sort of collaboration and just a sense of community and helping each other. And so I think that, you know, it's nice to be from here because my family does have connections and they help me, you know, like, oh, I know that person from church or I know that person from the gun club or whatever it is. Um, and that's always nice. But then it's also that sense of, your home even though you might go on trips and things like that but that's it's nice to be born and raised here and still blossoming here and still learning a new part of savannah every day have you ever heard people like be like you have to be from savannah to like be successful there i think that's total baloney yeah why do people truly why do do you think people say i think old people say that (laughs) i think that that has really gone away savannah's a transient town you have the port, you have SCAD, you have so the film industry coming here. So many people coming from all over the world to Savannah. And that's so refreshing to see and to have that um, melting pot really here. Um, and in a way, that might have been true 20 years ago, but it's definitely not true now. Most of the people I work with and know here, like I said, there's not a ton of us who grew up in Savannah that are still here. And so it's nice when you bump into some people like that. But most of the people who I work with every day or who I'm friends with or who I'm, you know, just bump into, they're, they're newbies. They've only been here for maybe five years. And I'll tell you, because I married a Michigander, a ton of people from Ohio and Michigan live here, which... Did, I didn't even realize until I married a Michigander, and everyone's like... Oh, that's what they call them, Michiganders? Michigander. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, that's real. So do you think there is a little bit of a badge of honor to be like, yeah, I was, I was raised here. I, was, I grew up here. You think so? No, um, I'm asking. I'm asking. I don't know. See, in some ways, I think people, because there has been that statement or um, that feeling of the great state of Chatham or like, oh, you have to be here to make it here. That was such a thing for so long that now it's kind of like, oh, you're, you're from here. So it might be a negative now. Oh, interesting. You know? I that perspective. Yeah. I, I think it's just fascinating because like Savannah, 
I mean, between this podcast and uh, Visit Savannah, mm -hmm. Savannah, Georgia, Anything But Ordinary, available on iTunes right now. Shout um, out. <laughs> um, we talk a lot about, you know, the culture of Savannah, like what sure. it means to be Savannian. Yeah. And, uh, like, one anecdote that I keep giving that I've heard over and over is, like, you know, it depends how long – if you've been here your whole life, well, maybe your parents – weren't born here no. or like their parents it's like kind of it's like this i'm sixth generation you're sixth generation Savannah in. Oh, yes wow. so. um so my family came over from germany wow. crying there's actually a uh, street named after my family and then um my papa's papa had a lumber company here for a while and then um my nana, my late nana, she, her family had a lumber company and somehow that, that's how they all met. But it, anyway, long story short, yes, they grew up together, um, next door neighbors and had the whole love affair, but I'm sixth generation Savannian. We've been here for a while, but like I said, so my mom is from Virginia and getting back to the whole, you know, do people kind of wear a chip on their shoulder from being from Savannah? I always kind of felt like I needed to say, so I, I grew up in Savannah, but I, you know, I also lived in Virginia for a little while. I went back and forth. Like, I don't know why I feel the need to say that, but I do. Cause it's almost like, Oh, you stayed in your hometown. Yeah. That's interesting. And I don't know if that's just that's a how I feel thing. about my hometown. Right. But I came here. And blossom. Yeah. yeah. And you just did your own thing and went out into the world and, and I feel like I have made my own mark in Savannah, but you know, most people don't know. I, now I'm like incognito. I'm Craddock, so no one knows. Again, it's for a Michigan name, <laughs> so it's not necessarily a Savannah name. But I just feel like I have to always defend it. Like, oh no, I I did that, and I've been over here, and I've traveled there, and I've done other things. I haven't heard that perspective yet. Mm. So very interesting. But I do love being from here savannah's special and i don't think that i would and everyone does come back you do come back yeah. because there's this feeling of your home and your neighbors are your family and you make your own community that way and you have everyone over for low country boil or an oyster roast and you go to the beach together and you go on the boat together and it's really just a nice feeling to be home cool let's talk about you for a second oh goodness um not like your title, but generally, what do you consider yourself like day to day? Like, what's your, what do you do? Whew. I know. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> PR, um, but yes. more, just, it's more than just that. It's, yes, it's a lot. It's a lot. So um, I've been really blessed in my professional career. I was um, a little baby intern when I first met Cecilia. And since I have been working with Cecilia Russo Marketing, I've gone from intern to public relations specialist to director of communications to junior partner and now managing partner. And what that truly means is that I make sure everything runs smoothly. I run the campaigns for the clients. I make sure that the branding's correct, the imaging uh, images, um, even the color codes, the message points within everything. Um, but also, I make sure if there's any crisis, we know what we're handling and how to handle it. Um, I, a little bit of that going on these days. All the time. Yeah. Even before these COVID craziness. But um, I'm a sucker for a crisis. So I truly did like, <laughs> like the adrenaline of like, okay, let's get in here. Let's do this. Um I'd rather not have a crisis, but I do like that kind of thrill, which is weird, I know. Um, I don't know. I do so much. It's wild. But I have a whole team that supports us. And, you know, I count you as a team member. I count um, my writers and my photographers and my even my mentors as team members. Like, what, I go to people for advice and support all the time, and I just – it's nice. I feel like sometimes I'm just moving puzzle pieces around, which is – a broad definition of what I do. So like PR, I mean, and I've had a couple of PR pros on here in the past. Sure. Skylar Lanier. Uh, Love Skylar. Love her. I miss she's, her. She's dead to me. 
She's dead to you. She's on my fantasy football league. I run a ladies league, and so this year she's going to play with us because I miss oh, her so much. Nice. Yes. I have to catch up with her because I haven't heard, I haven't talked to her since she she's moved fabulous. up to Virginia. But she yeah, she's the best. Mm-hmm. Um, so something we talked about when I talked to my PR people, which is there used to be like this old idea of like hiring a PR agency. Mm-hmm. And now not only PR, but there's kind of like this convergence of marketing and sales. So like, right. There's kind of more of a focus on digital. Yes. And so when like yes. C- Cecilia Russo marketing, it's like, well, what does marketing mean? What is that? Yeah. And, so. it, and it truly is different to every client. Um, you know, we do a whole assessment and ask them, what are your goals? What are your needs? Who are you targeting? Like getting back to the basics, of course. And then do you even know, do they know, do they know, and usually they don't. And we have to do that research and find it based on the statistical data that we found. And I'm a big nerd, so I love getting into data. But anyway, um, that's a side note. I would say that um, everyone has something different. Digital's huge. Uh, lead generation and direct sales, although that wasn't something we've done in the past, is something that we're currently working on for some people. Like doing... Um, um- doing the direct sales yourself or helping them set up their own sales? So not necessarily doing direct sales, but um, being that point person for a client that introduces community members to their brand. So taking different meetings and um, just knowing where that client needs to be connected to, having someone on my team go and make that connection on behalf of the client. And so it's a, it's a totally different part of marketing that we haven't, I mean, I say we haven't done it. Cecilia's done almost everything in her career, I would say, but um, that was kind of new to me this year. We do some fundraising for folks. We do um, a lot of graphic design, photography, videography, websites. I mean, it's everything but then there is that huge component of media relations and making sure that the most powerful stories are being told in the correct way and and where can we tell them is there any part of it that you particularly love all of it Cecilia makes fun of me because <laughs> we were we were talking to Skylar one time and we were um she was telling us what she loved and what she didn't like. And she's like, you know, I really don't like making cold calls. And she wouldn't mind if I told her all that. But she um, she was like, I really don't like that. And then she looked at me and she said, Cynthia, what, what don't you love? And I was like, I sat there and I thought about it for a solid 15 minutes, Tyler. And there's nothing really that I don't love. I'm just so every day is different and it's challenging. And I'm stressed out. I have white hairs for sure if you zoom in. But I love it. I love the thrill. I love writing. I love beautiful content, even if it's about the weirdest things. It doesn't matter to me. It just makes me happy. This episode of The Creative Truth is sponsored by Colas Modern, a family-owned art and design studio focused on producing contemporary furniture and home decor based right here in Savannah, Georgia. The company is owned by David and Lara Colas. David is a former podcast guest. So if you haven't listened to that one, go check it out. All of their furniture and home goods are designed and manufactured right here in Savannah, Georgia, handmade, uh, including this coffee table, which is like an absolute favorite of mine. So if you're looking for a personal gift with a story behind it, you can check out some of their unique cutting boards, so like their butler board, their cleaver board, or their fruit board, and more. You can follow them on Instagram at shopmodernheritage or find them online at shopmodernheritage.com. That's on Instagram at shopmodernheritage or online at shopmodernheritage.com heritage.com uh do you think you're creative on the day-to-day since this podcast is called the creative truth oh yeah you have to be you have to be yeah yeah you can't ever be cookie cutter you can't keep anything the same and you're always growing and learning a different i mean my husband makes fun of me all the time you know aaron i mean he just is like cynthia turn off and i'm like well we could do this this could be a great campaign aaron and he's like "Mm -mm, you don't work with them you don't need to do that simmer down you know but i just my mind's like a popcorn machine sometimes it just boom 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 let's keep going um do you do creative things as hobbies sure i'm not very good at it 
but I like to paint. Okay. So um, my son, when he was born, I painted all the paint. Um, the decorations in his room and we had a little alligator theme and so I made a horrible looking alligator but I liked it and um yeah I like to uh, so I have an easel and sometimes that's my unwind in a weird way I don't have to think about painting I just do it because you know as a high producer sometimes you're just thinking too much Mm -hmm. and you just need to unplug um so I like doing that a lot my grandpa and my three of my aunts are photographers. So sometimes we go out and we take different photos of like um, Asaba or Wasa or some of the barrier islands, which is nice. Um, so all the pictures in my house are generally ones that me or a family member took. Cool. So we like doing that a lot. Um, he, My papa also, he's a wood turner. So... Um, I used to dabble with that a little bit, but my brother's mostly into that. I'm not very good. What does he make, or what do they make? Oh, so my papa makes um, wooden bowls, ornaments, pens, um, just beautiful objects. He's in, like, the master class of wood turning. (laughs) It's it's crazy, but he loves it. He's been doing it for 40 years. I remember they came, I don't know if it's his organization, but some sort of wood turner came to the Coastal Heritage um, Museum, the Railroad Museum. Yeah, and, uh, he was there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like a group of old men in their lathe, and they're oh, like yeah. so jazzed up about then turning wood. Then you probably saw my pop. <laughs> okay, I probably did meet him. That he time. was like a president at one time, and now he's just a mentor to the younger they're guys. They're making tops. Yeah. 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 And then they do all kinds of charity things. A bunch of old guys. Yeah. It's oh, cute. they're all so excited about yes. And little kids love it, too, because... I yeah, know. So funny. I know. So do you think like people's brains are broken up into like their analytical, you know what they say, like right brain, left brain, like creative and analytical? Like, or do you I don't know. Like a, a I think, jello? I mean, so I always say that women have spaghetti brains and men have waffle brains. Have you ever heard that before? No, th- explain that a little okay, bit. Okay. Okay. So, um, Women can connect dots from something that has nothing to do with the other thing. <laughs> so you're essentially your mind is like a spaghetti bowl. Like all these different noodles are connecting and weaving through one another and making knots, but you're always thinking about everything at once. Whereas a man has a waffle brain, like they're a little compartmentalized. They see things right in front of them and that's it. And then when they're done with it, they're moving on to the next compartment. And it's nothing wrong with that. They just that's just how they, they need both move through things right yeah. so i feel like for me i can be creative and nerdy at the same time like i love getting into metrics and looking at the data and finding the different trends across whatever platform i'm on whether it's google or social or i mean even excel sometimes but then other times i can't stand that i'd rather be drawing something or creating something or or doing mm. so you and my think- papa just to, just to support it, he is super creative with photography and photoshop and his wood turning but he used to be a banker <laughs> you know so I, I don't feel like there's one or the other i think you can i think people just need to tap into it more so you don't think you're you don't think people certain people are just born creative you think it's something that it's a choice or something that can be developed. So I feel like there is something out there for everyone to bring it out. Like, um, wood turning wasn't fun for me, but when I was in fibers class in Savannah arts Academy, when I was in high school, what's fibers, um, you made like paper and you made different yarns and you did these everything dealing with fiber that was fun for me it was like textiles and you know um things like that i I just think that there's some things that will call to you that you just haven't found yet like my nana she loved music that was her her thing she taught us piano and i could not keep up with her i tried (laughs) but it was not my thing do you think it's worth trying to find that thing or those things that give you the, oh, absolutely. The, the creative expression i do i'm pr- i'm really biased though i'm sure because creativity makes me happy art makes me happy no matter what that is i mean it just 
How about societally? You think it's uh, like, what do you think it brings? I think it brings fresh perspectives and acceptance. Like the fact that I know that's not my art, but I appreciate someone's work and doing it. Um, but then, you know, I'm married to someone who would be like, he, if he was sitting next to me, he'd be like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not creative. I, although he, if he says he would say that, yeah. but then I'd be like, no, you do woodworking and you're a carpenter and you do all this, which is its own right, right. Creative. Right. So, I mean, maybe you just have to look at creativity in a creative way to see which one's yours. Right. Agreed. Um, how about uh, something you're really proud of? Oh, my son. I'm proud of him. He's my life. I don't know. What else? Do you see him? Um, you know, we talk in the past on this podcast about being childish and childlike. Yeah. And uh, child ch being childlike is having like this childlike wonder and uh of the world yeah yes. of everything yeah like you, you, you go to the zoo and they're looking at the trash can it's like <laughs> that's real <laughs> that yeah. it's real yeah yeah it's it's cool because as a parent i think that it forces you to be childlike because you get down on his level and i before i had a kid i didn't even realize like you have to teach them how to swallow like the ba most basic things that you know, someone taught you that. And that was just really a weird concept. I was like, oh my gosh, this infant doesn't know how to do this, Aaron. You're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to teach him. Like sneezing. Do you know how long it took us to like teach Emerson to blow his nose? Like he just didn't, you don't know that until you know that. So anyway, I digress. But it's just, you start to figure out how to be a kid again it's like hook did you ever watch that movie oh, of course yeah yeah, course. yeah. so We're good robin williams generation yes yeah. so good but he had to like get back to it in order to actually see how lame he was being so totally so do you think <laughs> being a mom is like kind of helped you be more creative in some ways yes i also think that it makes me turn off work some mm. which will burn you out like, if you keep going, before I had Emerson and before, really, I was married even, I would work all the time. Yep. I know you're guilty of it. <laughs> I would just work, and I would come home from work, and I would eat dinner, and I'd turn on TV, and I'd be like, well, you know what? I can do this, too, while I'm watching TV. And I'd pull up my computer, and I'd do a little more. And then after it was the weekend, I'd be like, well, let me get this done, and this done, and this done. And I was getting a lot done, but I started to notice that I wasn't as energized and I wasn't as into it. And I just felt drained. So I didn't realize that's what was happening <laughs> until I got married. And Aaron's like, okay, well, it's us. It's our time. Like, I want you here with me, which understandable. Of course you do. <laughs> I'm not just a workaholic. Let me do this. And so... Then even more so when you have a baby because it's like when you get home, you are responsible for a lot of things and you have to make sure they all happen. And then it's bedtime and then you have one hour before you're exhausted and going to sleep yourself. But you wake up and you're so much more like you have a set turn off time and a set turn back on time. And it just gives your brain that rest that you need. Mm -hmm. So do you do certain things to help kind of recharge the battery, your mm. batteries? I love bubble baths. I take one about once a week. I go to the beach. I look at the stars. I don't know. I'm big into nature. I don't know. Um, let's see. Let's talk about. We talked about. We talked about this greater Savannah community. Sure. Let's talk about because I, I feel obligated yeah, to right. mention the Savannah JCs, mm -hmm. what they are, how you got involved, whoop, whoop. who roped you in. Okay. Well. Um, and I'm not saying this begrudgingly. It's just that Leandra would, you know, she would shame me if I didn't. If we didn't mention it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so happy she would shame us. Yes. 
Let's see. I joined the Savannah JCs 2014. So it's been seven years now. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a regular member and then a communications committee member and then a vice president of communications and then a president. And then I was going to be a president again, but I decided, I think I was pregnant at the time. Anyway, then I moved up to the state board of directors for the Georgia JCs, and now I'm just a regular member again. (laughs) And I've been a Slack member, I know. I haven't been to any events really this year. And every time I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there, but... I do. um, I love the JCs. I'll continue to be a part of it until I'm 40, probably. I think that there's a lot of um, validity behind getting to know the members of the JCs. I love the mission. Could you, could you, on that, could you give a two sentence description to the listeners who don't know what the JCs are? Sure. To um, inspire leadership development. Well, all right. Let me just say it in my own way. No, I'm not going to recite the creed. <laughs> I'm not doing all that. Okay. So essentially, it's to build a better community while you um, work on your own leadership development. Mm-hmm. So um, Young professionals, 21 to 40. Yeah, absolutely. International. And you learn so much. I mean, when I first joined in my professional setting, I was just a support person for different things, but as... I was in the JCs. The JCs let you run things. I ran the social media. I edited the website. I ran some projects. I mean, we held some major fundraisers that I was, you know, a lead on or and helping with the project management. And yes, there's a team that helps you, but when you're the lead and you're building out this campaign, you have you're the point person. You have to think about it from A to Z. Um, and so I ran a lot of different fun projects that I absolutely loved. Um, one being the date night auction that they roped me into one year and the next year I was running it. So that was fun. But, um, yeah, I just, I think it's a great group of people who are like-minded growing in their professions and still having a good time because we have a good time. It's true. Yeah, and if you're like if like me, if you're new to a city, like it's a great way to just it is. go meet young professionals and get involved. And Absolutely, get back. So. And I mean, that's how I met Leandria, mm-hmm. and she's in my wedding. You know, yeah. like she is one of my best friends. She's, she'll come on here soon. She's fabulous. Like I could not think of a be- like. She's amazing, truly, and I would I owe my friendship with her to the Savannah JCs. And I feel like there's a lot of different. You and I met there. That's where I met to Raz Misher, co-founder of the podcast. I met him there too. Yeah. Shout out to Raz. I miss you and I love you, buddy. <laughs> He'll hear this. Good. He'll, he'll leave a comment. Oh, I miss him so much. Do you have any advice to uh, young people who are starting in, uh, they want to go down kind of a path similar to yours? Hmm. Um, I would say... Always treat a new connection as someone who is really, really important. So whenever you meet someone, whether they're younger than you or older than you or the same age as you, it doesn't matter. Treat that person as they are worth your time and energy and that you would help them out no matter what. Because I feel like business is all about connecting people. Uh, growing personally, like uh, without even professional, just growing as a person, I think that you need that um, servant le- leadership mentality, and that will take you further than you could ever dream or think of, truly. Um, and then also knowing who, like, be real. I, you know, I don't have, I feel like you and I are friends, mm-hmm. you know, I don't totally. feel like. I'm having a facade or trying to be someone I'm not in front of you. I'm just Cynthia. This is me. You either take it or do it. You don't. You I love it that. or you hate it. Like, that's just, yes. it's just it. And I'm not perfect. I'm not. <laughs> and I'm I don't doing my pre- best. I don't pretend to be. And <laughs> anyone who does, I feel like they're just setting themselves up for failure, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. you are you. And that's that's beautiful. Yep. And own it. Um, and you'll... 
You'll be fine. So let me rephrase the same question. They invented a cell phone that calls back in time, and you can call your 17-year-old self and leave a 60-second voicemail. What advice would you give yourself at 17 years old? I was figuring out so much at 17 years old. I would probably tell myself to enjoy summer break a little more. <laughs> you know? Cause Did you get a job at 16? I, I had a job at 15. 15, yeah. I had a job I've been working since, since 16. the minute I could have a job. Mm -hmm. And it was like, first of all, what do I do with all that money? I did not save it correctly. But <laughs> furthermore, I, you know, when you get into the real world business or whatever it's harder to get vacations and time off and even when you do take time off you feel guilty about taking time off because there's so much to do and so many projects and people are counting on you and it is tough so when you're 17 you don't have that many res that much responsibility and even though you think you do but. relax just relax and enjoy life a little more and enjoy the time you have with your family because some of your family won't be there later on. And that, that time is super precious. It's great advice. You um, tell them a mom, right? Like, I'm like, enjoy your family. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great advice. I mean, people, you know, I definitely took some things for granted that I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. It's like summer vacation, like you said. Yeah. Like, I just worked. It's like, oh, man. I, right. You know. And some go, of the. Take a year off. Go to Europe. Go you know? to Europe. Go to Europe. <laughs> I can, for real, go to Europe. Because you, you're going to have to wait till ever since I went, 18. I right? went for a month right you when did? I graduated college. That's awesome. Because I knew I wasn't going to do it yeah. any other time. And I just. Cecilia was like, oh, you have a job here when you get when you get out of college? I was like, great. But I'm not starting until this date because I've already purchased a ticket. And I flew into France. And I stayed in France for two weeks and then I went up to Amsterdam and then I went down to Italy and then I went back into France and I just stayed a whole month and it was fabulous. Met a childhood friend I grew up with here and it was just, I still look back at that and I'm like, yes, yeah, I want to go back so bad. And it's what, like now a month goes by so fast, but yeah. that month is like lives in your memory as like one of the best months of your life. Yes, yeah. it was, it was. And then, like I said, it's so hard to get time off. I mean, I think my next longest vacation was my honeymoon which was two weeks you know so it takes that long to get that time off but it's fabulous mm -hmm. how can people learn more about cecilia russo marketing crm mm -hmm. you now's your chance to plug something sure so cecilia russo marketing is a brand reputation management company in savannah georgia we serve clients across the southeast um in all things public relations marketing and fundraising you can find us online at crussomarketing.com on facebook instagram uh, linkedin all, all the social places um and yeah we would love to hear from you well, thank you. Uh, any thank other, you for the plug. Of course, yeah. <laughs> any uh, any other closing words of advice for the listeners? Find friends as cool as Tyler Edick because I am just really honored to be on your podcast. This is really cool. Yeah, um, thanks for coming great on. Great experience. I love what you've done with the place. You drove uh, down Victory Drive at 5 o'clock on a Friday night. First mistake. <laughs> First get here. mistake. But it was worth it, and I um, – yeah, this has been fun. Yeah, it's been awesome. Thanks for coming on. Um, in upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. If you have episode feedback or guest suggestions, you can email me at hello at creative-truth.com. You can learn more about the podcast and get some swag at creative-truth.com. If you're listening on iTunes, don't forget to leave me a review. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Cynthia, thank you for coming on. Everyone, thank you for listening. We just hit 1,500 downloads, and we're going for 10,000. All right. Thanks for Tomorrow, listening. Tomorrow, 10,000. <laughs> okay. All thanks, right. Tyler. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>